I'm going to discuss preventive maintenance basics. Most of the CMMS softwares out there will have all work done in the work order screen. I went to the work order screen and opened it and as we can see if I select a row we've got quite a few fields. There's only two required fields but we've got quite a few other things we can do here including adding file attachments and there are quite a few options. So when you create a new work order you're actually creating a new data item in the database. Okay and let me just bring up a quick print preview of this. We can kind of look at it. Yeah, move it over here we can see it. And as you can see Essentially, we have one equipment item and one main task description. Now, we can add plenty of details if we'd like. So, essentially, this is going to be one unit of work, though. All right, so let's compare this to the PM screen. Go ahead and close this. And the PM screen will be the gray background oil can. And this is where we update or close the PMs. Notice we also have a green background oil can. This will be for reporting and analyzing PMs. And then we also have the yellow. Now the yellow background buttons designate setup or configuration for that particular part of the program. In this case, this will be for PM setup. This will be covered in another video. All right, so back to our PM screen. PMs essentially are created one time and when they're closed they roll over to a new start and due date. So let me illustrate that. I'm going to go ahead and save my grid settings here. Okay, so if I take this PM here and select it, I can come down to this framed in area here and this is the area that's used for closing the PMs. I'm going to focus on this first. I'll put in the hours to close it, or to complete it rather, and any task completion comments. And when I click the completed button, a couple of things happen. First of all, this particular PM with this start date and due date are archived into history. The labor hours are also archived into history. Any parts that may have been used on this particular PM are archived into history as well as the task completion comments. So that's always going to be available to analyze and report on later. As far as this PM goes, it will roll over. And what I mean by that is, it'll take the completed date, make it the new start date, add the interval to the start date to generate a new due date. So let's see what happens. I click completed and you'll notice it did indeed roll over. Now off to the side here we have another screen that popped up. Apparently this particular PM had some parts linked to it. So you can optionally either have the parts automatically used and in this case that's what it did or you can just have them listed on the PM sheet itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this PM sheet looks like. And we'll have a separate video on how to filter. For now, I'm just going to pick this one equipment item. That's this 90-degree roller bed. And I'm going to bring it up in a print preview just so we can look at the PM list and kind of compare it to the work order. Okay, so the PM list has multiple tasks. In this case, we just have one equipment, but it could have multiple equipments. Additionally, you can add unlimited details to each task, and I'm not seeing any here. Well, there's a few. These could be up to 2 gigabytes per record, so essentially no limit. Uh, you can also link parts, as we have here, and so on. So there's quite a bit you can do with the PM screen, but it isn't meant to duplicate the capability of the much more comprehensive work order screen. So why would you want to use the PM screen instead of or in combination with the work order screen? Probably the main reason is it's simpler. For your calendar-based, we call them quick and dirty calendar-based PMs, 
this is ideal. Okay, so we've gone through a few of the basics. The other thing I want to cover in this particular video is one of the other update modes. Now we were, if we look down here, we'll see we're in data update mode, close completion. So we came in here and we can actually select multiple PMs by holding down the control key or a whole block of them by holding down the shift key. And then we can close these all out at once. Now the question uh, comes up, if we close these, is 0.3 hours attributed to each one or is it divided equally amongst these five selected PMs? The answer to that is, however you set this option, that's what's going to tell it what to do. So right now we have divide completion time by all selected rows. And we can just go ahead and we'll raise that value to 1.3 hours. And when I click completed, all of these will close at the same time. Now they were archived with 1.3 hours divided by 5, whatever that comes out to be. Okay, so let's get back to this close completions data update mode drop down. What we're going to do now is suppose we have a situation where we want to actually change the assignment on the PM. Now you can do this from the PM setup screen as you'd expect. However, since this is something that's commonly done, people go on vacation or they're gone for one reason or another, you may want to reassign the PMs temporarily out to someone else or permanently for that matter. So that function has been added to the screen. So what we do is we pick assign PM tasks. Then we can go in and select some PMs, same way we selected them for closing. We can pick who we want to assign it to and click assign and it immediately changes the assignment.